welcome to episode two of the joint mashup of myself, Naomi, of the Yarn Curator, and I am Zoe from the Felicity Yarn Studio channel. Um, so if you guys missed part one, Naomi and I did a little show and tell catch up episode that is over on my channel. Yes, and this is part two of us sitting down for I'm visiting Zoe here in North Carolina from Florida and so if you're just stumbling on this video as she said this is part two where we're gonna do our unintentional non Rhinebeck haul. Yes. It is Rhinebeck weekend here in the U.S. We had originally planned to go to the mm -hmm. festival this year. It was gonna be our first Rhinebeck yep. and I still had the vacation time requested off from work so I decided to come up get away from a little bit and Spend some time together. You know what I just thought of? We didn't get to try apple cider donuts. But we did. We bought donuts, donuts yesterday. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I flew in, what, Thursday. Thursday. We spent the night with our parents, drove back to Zoe's house, helped her pack mm -hmm. advent calendars a little bit. We're going to do that this afternoon. Yep. And then yesterday we did a little mini oh, yarn crawl. Is, does two stores count as a yarn crawl? Yes. Anyway, yeah. So yesterday <laughs> we went to Cheers to You in Charlotte. Um, I forget what exact town around Charlotte they're in. Are they like, um, they're like North Pine Central? Central? Yeah. Charlotte. Um, and then we went to Charlotte Yarn, which is in like downtown, downtown. Charlotte. Um, I've been to Charlotte Yarn a few times when I lived a little bit closer to the city. Um, but this was my first time at Cheers to You, and they had a really nice shop It was well. cute. Um, yeah, so. And they were both, I would say, equal mm -hmm. roughly in size in terms of square mm -hmm. footage. They had a mix of, like, local indie dyers. And, and some brought in, and then. Yeah, imported, mm -hmm. and then. Um, some house yarns and some commercial yarns and the at Charlotte yarn they had some new like embroidery and kind of stitching mm -hmm. things like cross stitch yeah that kind of stuff which was new um, it's been a year or two since I've been in their shop but anyway so, yeah it was nice to see those mm -hmm. and get out and explore I like seeing new yarn shops mm -hmm. it's always good to see what's out there and then uh, because I tend to be a bit of an online shopper as yes, well. Yes. It's nice to go see a store and what they have in person. Yeah. So you know what you're looking at online. So I guess we can do our yarn shop purchases first if you want. Yeah. Since we're talking about it right now. I was really good and only bought one thing while we were crawling yesterday. <laughs> hey now. Oh, and I talked about it in the last video, but I was at Black Mountain last week to visit with the aunties who were in town. So I've got one thing from... Yes, to share. As do one, I. Actually, I bought two things, but one is packed away, so sorry, y'all. You'll just see it when it comes out. <laughs> and I sent my personal shopper, so I also yes. sent something <laughs> from that. So anyway, yeah, at Cheers to, to you, you, I pitched, picked up this skein of Hedgehog Fibers in the Merino DK base. I think the colorway is Pistachio. Yes. And I thought that was a really pretty color for a baby knit for my new niece. Um, they had a little baby sweater in a DK weight. I can't tell if that focused or not. Sorry. Oh. It's all right. Um, they had a really pretty baby sweater, which I don't think I'm going to do that same pattern, but I was like one skein of DK and these nice girly pastel colors would make a really cute little baby sweater. And then, even though I'm trying not to buy single skeins of yarn, <laughs> I couldn't resist the skein of Ching or King Fiber. Um, I don't remember the colorway on that. You might need to look at the label. Cool. Cactus. Cactus, okay. But it has these really pretty flashes of coral speckles yeah. in it. And, yeah, I, like a I just, foam green base. Yeah, I knew that would work with some other things in my stash. And, um, you know, when you just see a skein, it's just meant to it be. It speaks to you. Then again, who needs a scarf? Wrap some old jeans around your neck. That'll keep you warm. That's what your mother would do. 
So um, I have an idea in the back of my mind, but I'm not sure what this will be yet. So I picked up one skein of Native Fibers. It's a local dyer here in the Charlotte area. Also that same seafoam green color. <laughs> Minty kind of. And not minty. It's more yellowy green. Yeah, pistachio. it's tea green, like a tea. Yeah. What's the word I'm but looking we for? We were tea clearly tree. on a vibe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but it has really light blue speckles mm -hmm. just ever so They're very gently delicate. Yeah. throughout. And so, yeah, I actually picked this up. I'm going to use this as a giveaway prize because I am like... 10 people away from hitting 500 subscribers, which is just <laughs> mind blowing. Yes. And so I got this and I also raided Zoe's shop stock yesterday. <laughs> and there, so I'm going to give away two prizes. So if you're watching, not to shill too much, but if you're watching right now and you're not already subscribed, consider hitting Hi. that button down below. And if we hit 500, the next time I record a traditional episode, I will do a little giveaway, and this is one of the prizes that I will yeah. be including in that. You want to go ahead and show the other one? Uh, yeah. So I did uh, go through all of Zoe's shop inventory yesterday. I did a little it's personal a shopping. <laughs> yes. I used a lot of self-control, though. You know it's here if you yes. want it. <laughs> and so for the giveaway, I picked up one of her uh, fall colorways right now. This is, but it's one of your oopsie yes it's an oops pumpkin splice <laughs> yes. spice not splice <laughs> yeah. plumpkin spice yes and it is a sock set with a matching mini mm -hmm. on a tweed base yes. the mini is really pretty too yeah i want to do the mini as a, a full scheme color too so yeah it's got these really pretty golds with a really pretty plum on the tweed and you can go back and watch Zoe's video for what she's working on right now to see how yeah. this will roughly work up. Similar. Those came out also a little bit lighter. I was going to say the plum um, color is a little... But I kind of like, like it like It's a little more too. muted, faded, yeah. vintage look. So. So, yes. These, among other goodies that I will throw in with the package, <laughs> as I do. Those are good prizes. Yes. So, mm -hmm. if you're not subscribed... Ring that bell. <laughs> Ring my bell. <laughs> Call me mom. <laughs> yes. Our mom, if you say a song lyric, breaks out in song. Yes. And I definitely inherited that trait. Me too. <laughs> inherited or learned? Nature versus nurture. Both. Probably. <laughs> Uh, okay, so... Speaking of mom... Yes. Do we want to go through... Oh, sure. Why not? So, our parents yeah. sold their house, like, three or four months ago. Yes. And hit the road full-time on their RV, and they've been out west. Yes, they got back a few weeks ago. Yes. And while they were out west, I think mom did a tour of the fiber farms she, near her. A couple of them. This... One she went to, that's the... Meadow, Meadow Mountain Wool. Meadow Mountain, yeah. Which, she went to the mill, didn't she? Yes. So, we got a text one day that was like, do you guys want some fiber? <laughs> to which we're, do we? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And she was like, all right, pick one. And we're like, well, can we pay you to get a second one? <laughs> Is there room to shove more fiber, fiber in the RV? So, yeah. We got some fiber. <laughs> and yes, we're ridiculous. Yes. Um, so we each got a pound of Cormo. Cormo, yeah. And I'm going to read the label. Yeah. So natural cream, Cormo combed top, grown on Pheasant Ranch in Casey, Wyoming, made in Buffalo, Wyoming. Yep. So Zoe and I are both fans of the Cormo. Yeah. Which so is a Corriadale Merino cross. You remember more than I do. But that <laughs> makes sense with the, the name. name. <laughs> yes. And then the gray is Rambouillet. Natural light gray. Also grown on Pheasant Ranch. Casey, Wyoming. 100% Mountain Merino Rambouillet. So, this is a really pretty light gray yeah, natural like color. Yeah, like a smoky gray. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we have a pound of each color. Yes. Oh, there's more of there that I forgot about that she got us. So I'm really excited to spin this because I haven't spun Rambouillet before. I don't think you have either. I Excuse don't me, think Zoe. So. so this will be fun. And the best part was when she was texting us, <laughs> she was like, What do you want? And I was like, I don't know. I trust your discretion. Just yeah. pick something out. Yeah. I'll like it regardless. To which she was like, Well, if you want fiber, tell me what you want. <laughs> so we told her. <laughs> but yeah, we kept getting pictures of like rooms full of, of fiber. random things of yeah. fiber. <laughs> so then when she was in Utah, maybe in Moab? This was, this was in, or I, the, my I label know. says Moab, but this came from Utah somewhere. Well, you, Moab is in Utah. Well, not, I know, but I don't know if the fiber came from there or if the shop was there. Oh, I think the shop was in Colorado. Oh. I don't know. Every day they were somewhere different. <laughs> yes. One of those places out west. But anyway, I thought this was a bat when she sent the picture, but it's more like just some roving or um, combed top, I guess, technically. It's like pencil roving. Anyway, it like. it's fine. I don't mind either way. This is from the sheep Thorberg. Is his name, I think. Yes, and it's a Border Lester Icelandic blend, and it's four ounces. So it's a little more rustic, a little... It's not prickly, but it's got some bite to it, but I don't mind that. I thought it was pretty toothy. Um, compared to some other things. Yes, it it's not a fine breed. But it's, I Probably would put medium. it on par with that Hebridean wool that we knit our stalactites yeah. out of. I think that's considered a medium, medium in I terms of coarseness. I also think the darker natural colors tend to be a little pricklier. I think I've heard that somewhere. Anyway. You got something else though. Yes, she she was sending more pictures and I was at I was in the middle of work, so I was uh -huh. just like I don't Whatever. know yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so I got uh, eight ounces of Tunis sheep. And I think the reason I even mm. said this one was because I thought it was from a local farm. I think they were in Moab. I think they were too. And so this is from Cunnington Farms, and yeah, it's eight ounces of so Tunis. Mine, yeah. If you are a spinner and you know about either of these breeds, feel free to drop yes. some knowledge down below. But yeah, it's this really pretty, light, natural cream color, and it's got little, um, I think it still has the guard hairs in it, mm -hmm. which is this, like, the, the darker one. bits poking through. But even that one... It's, it was a mildly prickly. It's a little prickly. I think it's a little bad. softer than it yours. Is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's got some tooth toothiness to it. But I'm excited to spin it. Yeah. And maybe play around with some natural dyes. Oh, yeah, that could be good for natural dyes. So. I say this now. I have like 60 avocado pits in my freezer. <laughs> you got enough to dye like three sheep's worth of wool. <laughs> Um, and I keep saying I'm going to dye, dye those avocado pits up, and then I never do. Yeah, and I know we both want to kind of do some breed, breed studies, studies of wool with uh, in regards to spinning mostly. I suppose we could always extend that into, like, how they knit up as well. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it's mostly driven by spinning and how fibers work up and whatnot. So, Sorry, I'm reading the you thing. Did. So, okay, that is, oh no, you got one more thing that mom brought back. Lofty, durable Tunis wool offers, sorry, excellent mm -hmm. stitch definition for your project. It would be an excellent choice for outerwear, such as mittens, scarves, or hats. So not a not build, a not build as yeah. next to skin soft. What else did I get from mom? Your husband's present. Oh, <laughs> it's covered in yarn. <laughs> yes. So we did get one other. We got one too, but yes, yes uh, adult, adult <laughs> beverage of from Boot Hill Distillery in Dodge City, Kansas. Yes. What's funny is they got this whiskey, and then they were like, "We could never go back to Dodge City. We'd yeah. be okay with it." <laughs> I know. Which uh, Jason drank some uh, the other night, and he said it's pretty smooth. It's a nice, 
Yeah. Kind of sipping whiskey. Which will be nice. John and I do have a little bit of a whiskey collection at home. Mm -hmm. We have a bottle from the distillery back where we used to live in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And then I think we have one from when we were in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Oh, last we drank year. that. <laughs> but that was actually a whiskey liqueur. I didn't realize that until we got home. Yeah, the, the honey one that we got at the castle actually, all oh, of our whiskey yes. is stored up high in our pantry. Mm -hmm. And it fell from the top shelf and hit the terrazzo and shattered. So that didn't even get consumed in our house. Oh, that's what that's the only thing I brought home. I think I got some little airport bottles one day. Mom and I stayed on the that's Royal right. Mile and yeah. we popped in and I bought some more things. That's when I got my unicorn tears gin. <laughs> anyway, so at the end of the part one. I don't know if we'll keep this in or not, but we were distracted by the mail person delivering oh, the package yes. on a Sunday, and I thought it was stitch markers for the advent calendars, but I got my advent calendar from Spectrum Fiber in, so this was an unintended addition to the, to the episode, but it's an acquisition. Ooh, that's a nice box. Yeah. It's a really nice box. Um, I, I assume they're gonna. Oh, look at that! Do you want me to look and see that they're wrapped, just so you won't spoil your surprise? <laughs> no, they're all wrapped. <laughs> yes, they're wrapped. Oh, that's really pretty. So uh, yeah. I am super looking forward to this advent calendar. I have been getting their neon clubs every month. That's really um, nice packaging. It is really that. nice packaging. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they must have ordered some custom boxes or something. Now I'm super excited about Advents. <laughs> I haven't even got the shipping notice on my Advent yet. And I have to ship mine back with me via... Oh, my one of my other hauls is I'm bringing back one of Zoe's Advents with yes. me after wrapping it for myself. <laughs> but you get the added bonus of picking out your own I know. schemes. Anyway... <laughs> All right. I'll be air mailing it back with me. Possibly. So what next? Auntie bags? Auntie bags. So yeah, I met with Aunt Mary and Aunt Laura in Black Mountain last week. We went to Black Mountain Yarn Shop and we also swapped the yarn that I dyed for them in exchange for the bags that they sewed for us. So yeah, you gotta either spin some yarn or something to hold up your end of the, the swapisms. I can spin them something. So we both got five or six bags yes. and then we left one each with our mom, mom um, just to spread the love a little bit. But we both got a Christmas themed bag. Is it Christmas? I think so. Oh, I just thought it was like, period it's period but um, i mean there's like there's like garland yeah and stuff true in the i didn't notice that at first um but anyway yes this was kind of a surprise and naomi's has black ties and mine has white but they're basically the same so it's yeah. really cute of course we both like historical things and you know period dramas and whatnot so this felt really Oh, mine came with a surprise pouch. Oh. Yeah, I don't have a... I got a different notions pouch. With but you mine. can see, and they've got cats. Uh, cats. <laughs> the auntie's business is called Fat Bottom, Bottom Bags, Bags. And they have... I think their Facebook page is the best way to like get in touch with them if yes. you're interested in a bag. Um, they are selling at that yarn shop. Pan banked well. knits in Brooksville, Florida. So, so yeah, it's really cute. And they all mm -hmm. the bags have uh, like a coordinating fabric. Things. Yeah, cotton, cotton, but pocket pockets. I've been talking too much. Yes, I'm starting to <laughs> lose our words here. Yes. And then, okay, I guess the next one that. This is, again, fabric that I sent to them that I had bought. That was deep stash. A few years ago. Um, I just really love this kind of, it's a very lightweight canvas. Kind of a tie-dye marble effect. I was going to say marble. And, yeah, Aunt Mary just picked the coordinating fabrics. And then Aunt Laura made a 
needle case that goes with it, which I really need. I thought you said you were thinking yeah. about using it for a giveaway. I, yeah, I think I might do a giveaway with the needle case. Um, so it's just, it's really pretty. It's just, Maybe for the steak along. Yeah. By the okay. way, we'll figure it out. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're doing a knit along right now. Yes. Steak along 2020. Yes. So if you are working on a steak project or any kind of cutting of your knitting, we're encouraging y'all yes. to join along either using the hashtag on Instagram, steak along 2020, or in our Ravelry group. Yes. There's a chatter FO yes. thread. I'm just staying standing because of all no. the showing. Yeah. <laughs> So the last one um, that, or well, sort of, the, I showed the other one, one on part the, one. Yes. Um, this is what inspired it all was this fabric, this Pride and Prejudice theme fabric that I saw originally on um, Audrey's podcast, the Knit Song podcast. Yes, I couldn't think of the name of her channel for um, a second. Again, big Jane Austen historical fans. I can't tell if that's... I don't know that the inside is anything <laughs> special. <laughs> um, not on that bag. Yours does. But, um, yes. Had to have some of this fabric. Yes. The only way that I found, like, all of them together was in these fat quarter sets. So I went on ahead and okay. bought one because they apparently have sold out really quickly. everywhere um so yeah i know Na new naomi would have wanted yes one so. as well so she got like the pemberley or it's got all the houses the houses there. the manor houses yeah. and then the swans i really like the, the, the liner fabric. the liner is super cute on this one the little like flowers the yeah so yeah that was and I think they use like every scrap of yes, fabric. Every in these last bit, yeah. Fat quarters. So yeah, those are our two Pride and Prejudice bags. bags. I don't I don't remember the size bag. They have cute names for all the sizes. Flirty, sassy, and Cheeky. something else. Um yeah, it's all on their Facebook page again. And then the last one. Is this one that is now housing my swallowtail sweater and it does actually oh I did get a notions pouch too uh, with no notions in it um I like this one because it has multiple pockets in it yes so it's really nice for the, a color work project where I can kind of keep things separated gotta keep them separated <laughs> Yeah, I haven't put any notions in my notions <laughs> pouch yet. Sorry. And then, while we're talking about Black Mountain, before you show off the rest of yours, this is one of the things that I picked up, is a skein of Lobby and a The colorway is yeah. called Magellanic Clouds. I thought it was Metallic Clouds. No. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I can't read. Um, anyway, I have some skeins picked aside for put aside that I'm considering um, for the West Knits mystery knit along that's happening right now. The slip extravaganza um, that I thought this was gonna work with, but I'm still undecided on that. Not that I mind having a skein of Love and May. Well, and I got four skeins of that because three, 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 three. either four. <laughs> Um, yeah, I got three skeins of it as well, the same colorway, because mm. I envision a purpley garden gate in my head mm. is what I have in mind for that pattern. That would be pretty. With a, like, a white contrast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That was so what my, another acquisition my personal is. shopper got that for yes. me. Um, yeah, so then your bags, I guess I'll pull them out for you. So this one is a fabric that I bought and played around with sewing some of this same print mm -hmm. earlier this year, but I gave it to them and they made a little bag. I'm thinking this is going to be saved for a giveaway prize as mm -hmm. well for the podcast since I already have two bags out of the same print and fabric at home. And, and this Mom is... got the big version of Yes, it. and this is much nicer than what I made, <laughs> so... Yeah. They can show, sew in a straight line. Yes. 
I and love this one. This bag is probably one of my favorites. It's a print that I picked up at Fancy Tiger like four years so ago. Cute. I've held on to it forever. And this, Look at those this cat looks like one of our aunt's old cats, Simon. Yeah. And this kind of looks like Lucy a little bit. And this one. A little, yeah. I've seen her okay. make that face yeah, before. I see it now. So I love this print. That's really good fabric, yeah. Yeah, and it's just got a plain gray inside, but this will be perfect for like shawls mm -hmm. or smaller projects. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been holding on to that fabric for ever. It's a really good bag. <laughs> and then the last bag, oh, it's got things in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, is some more animal crown animal flower crowns and I bought this bag towards fabric. the end of last year. Yes, fabric. And I've seen that fabric in other places too. But so it's yeah, good. we sewed it up. There's um and then this is not yarn related, but <laughs> on... since since this is the yarn curator yes. channel, yes. Yeah. So our family in Florida used to own citrus, uh citrus orchard, mm -hmm. and so this was our great grandfather's label and they gave me one before but a silver fish ate some holes mm. through it yeah and this is grandma yeah that's our grandmother there right there so yeah so a cool piece of history um i got one i gave one to zoe mm -hmm. and i'm gonna frame it and put it in our craft yeah, room i want to frame mine too so yes and where i work we interpret the history for that area there's actually a different citrus label that i had never seen before I started working for at the museum brand? for that brand oh, that's cool. on display there that they got from hmm. the state archives. I'll send you a picture of it. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> Reset. Because, but wait, there's more. <laughs> We're not done yet. Yeah. So Naomi brought me a bag of floof and things. Random goodness. Yes. So first up, we have this cone of Hulst yarn, which is a bit of a leftover a bit of a leftover. <laughs> <laughs> we are approximating there's probably about 3,000 yards or Maybe less. two. Yeah. Um, anyway, probably enough for me to get something out of this. It's not really a color I would go for. We went round and round about this last night. Um, but I'll keep it. I might make something. I mean, worst case scenario, you could always use it while spinning to do some True. like coarse spun yarn. True. So, I don't care. I mean, it can live here if you're... I don't think you're going to use as much wooly wool yarn. I have a whole nother cone of this at home in the exact same <laughs> colorway. Spreading the love. So, so yes, there was that. Next. This is another thing we've gone round and round about. I love this colorway from... Kindred Red. It was a one-of-a-kind color that she did for a yarn shop called Crystalline. Well, the yarn color is called Crystalline. The, Crystalline. the club is, it's a club. Scratch? Yes, Scratch Isn't Supply Co. So anyway, Naomi had ordered two skeins of this. I only ordered one. Go figure. I'm glutton. Yes. So, I don't know if you want to tell your... I feel like what was pictured is not what arrived. I do think yours are slightly different from mine, but I don't mind. I think they're close enough that if I alternate them, I can get something really pretty out of it. So I, I'm, I kind of have a few patterns in mind. I, I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> because I wasn't like, yeah, I think it's pretty. Don't get me wrong. It's very pretty yarn. It's just reality and sure. photograph did not match from what I had in my sure. mind. Therefore, I was just a little bit disappointed, even though it's still gorgeous yarn. Yes. But since Zoe loves it, we worked out a yeah. little bit of a barter swap for Yeah. So, and I think I got the better end of the deal. I think you did too in the end. <laughs> so, I swapped my two skeins of yarn for six, six, <laughs> six or eight. I don't remember what she yeah. I think it was six. Um, but Zoe dyed me a matching mohair and MCN base mm -hmm. of her 
what is it, Chrysocola? No, that's a that's a hundred percent custom. Custom. You can call it emerald if you want. Yes, emerald, emerald sapphire. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's our running inside Thing. joke. Yes. Sorry, but um, yes, I wanted a really deep mm. emerald yarn, and I can't remember the pattern I had in mind when I had her dye all of this. But I think it's something like a basic raglan mm -hmm. or a triscal, like a big, mm -hmm. fluffy, simple sweater. I think when you pair that mohair with that it's going to be going to be really pretty. Because yeah. this is kind of more of a... It's a little more yellow. I was going to say shamrocky, like... Yes. Like, that's what I think of with emerald. And I think you even think of a darker... No, I think more like this, but okay. probably a little more saturated. Mm -hmm. A little more blue to the undertone. See, every time I went more blue... I know. It wasn't what emerald I wanted. anymore. Yeah. It's, she got the color I wanted. <laughs> that's all that matters. There was a lot of texting and pictures back and forth. <laughs> and this is very similar to one of your advent colors mm -hmm. from, from last, last year. year. Yeah, that was the Crystal Cola. Cola. It, that just basically had like some navyish speckles. Who downstairs? I don't know. So anyways, yes, I swapped... Well, I gave you other yarn in yeah. addition yeah. to... It, it worked out. Yes, I... You'll show it in a second. Yeah. So, yeah, Zoe dyed this custom for me as part of our yarn barter. Mm-hmm. We can find out what that was yeah. about. So, anyways, yes, I gave you two additional skeins if you want to show them for... I get a big amount. Now that the nosy neighbor is gone. <laughs> yes. Oh, actually, I got another one, too. Well, I got this random skein of DK self-striping from Naomi. From is Art that, and Alchemy yeah. is the name of the dyer. And, yeah, it's really pretty. It's really pretty. I'm and interested to see how thick the stripes are in this with the way it's skeined. I was thinking that, too. And, yeah, I'm probably going to cast on some DK weight socks in the not-too-distant future. And then... This was also part of the bartering yes. here. Um, you'll, if you guys have watched either one of our channels for a while, you'll know that we both knit the stalactites pattern um, last year. Mine kind of bled into this year. And we both used some of this Croft 29 Hebridean wool that we picked up um, at EYF a year and a half ago now. Yeah, almost two years crazy. ago. Yeah, so um, I had... Four you left have four over. left over, and I had two left yeah. over, so. and I just knew I wasn't going to use that yarn. Mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't let her de-stash it either. <laughs> well, I think I offered it to you before de-stashing it, and so yeah, I have enough now to make either something. a second sweater or I don't know, whatever your heart desires. So it is special yarn, it and is. I like that we we both bought it together. Mm -hmm. At the same time, mm -hmm. and so it's going to a good home. Yeah, and I'm that's something that I'm okay with living in my stash for an extended period of time until the right thing comes yes. up for that. Which you were talking about maybe spinning something to go with that. Yeah, like maybe spinning a contrast color and doing a color work sweater or something. Maybe like a nice cardigan, because I don't do a lot yeah. of cardigans. Like it because it works really well as an outer garment. Mm -hmm. That's why I could see some. One of those super bulky grandpas by Hohe mm -hmm. might be good out of that. Maybe I don't know if it's enough, but anyway, yeah, we digress. So, this in is, addition to yarn, I yes. bought a bunch of fiber, <laughs> more fiber. <laughs> so I will try to pull. You can edit as much crinkling as you want. These are some bats out of that Shetland. It's 100% right? Shetland. It's a fleece that Zoe bought at the Asheville, Shelby, one of the local it farmer markets. It was at markets. the Asheville Farmer's Market. It was, they did a like wool day or something at the market. Um, not this past like May, but the May before that, where they had just a bunch of local, local-ish kind of in the region come and set up and... So, so, yes, I've been yeah. processing this fleece for 
for like this a year and a half now. Yeah. But this is all that I've carded so far. And I was like, you know, it's very greasy. I told you it's still greasy. It's and okay. I've, I've scoured this fleece like two times. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll be completely different from anything I've spun so yes. far. And I'm okay with that. And which, that would make a really pretty That would something. be pretty together. So yeah, it's like a natural oatmeal colored mm -hmm. fleece. And I just need to finish uh, carding all the fiber mm -hmm. and then I'll start spinning it. But I decided to share because the fleece itself was four pounds when I brought yeah, it home. Yeah, I was going to say, it was a lot. I haven't weighed it since washing a lot of the lanolin out, but I estimate there's probably still like two and a half pounds of fiber. I couldn't have lost that much grease. And... It smells really good. <laughs> it smells very lanolin-y. Sheepy. Yeah. And Maybe this will be what I... No, no, I keep getting distracted. <laughs> so anyways, I brought Zoe a yes. healthy amount of fiber of these little, I think they're one to two ounce fats is about what my carter fits on it. And I know she's been practicing woolen spinning, yes. so these will be, I was thinking, good practice. Yes. Bit. So there's that. <clears throat> I also like that. It was bought in North Carolina, went down to Florida, and now it's back <laughs> home. <laughs> and that sheep's name was Camille. Yes. It's Camille. I'm sure she's still alive. <laughs> Probably. It was we're we're going to say she is. It was her first fleece, wasn't it? I think maybe. Didn't they say? I don't remember. I If I really wanted to, I could go sift through the thousands of phone, pictures on my phone to figure out. if That might have been on my old Anyway, I digress. So yes, I got some more fluff from Naomi. Just this. Yeah. Right? This is a lot of indigo. It's about 200 grams. Okay. So I placed a big order with John Arbin at the start of the pandemic. It's what I knit my Jupiter crop out of. And I needed like 100 more grams of this color, the indigo dust, to finish my sweater spin. However... They are doing half-priced international shipping on orders over 500 grams. And it was cheaper for me to just buy 500 mm -hmm. grams of that color than pay mm -hmm. the lower rate. Like, mm. the lower... They do their international shipping by weight. And mm -hmm. so if I would have gone with the lowest Less weight, more. it was still more than the cost buying of more buying yarn, more fiber. More fiber yeah. So I just bought 500 grams of fiber... This is a really gorgeous It's color. gorgeous. It's got a really pretty depth of color. Yeah. It's like this bright teal blueish. Yeah. And then it's mixed with black and it spins up beautifully. Like I think I think I want to spin something to make a shawl out of this. I was thinking that that color would make a really pretty main color in Andrea Mowry's shift mm. pattern. Or yeah. Yeah. Or one of her shifting patterns. Oh, maybe I'll spin for that. Yeah. Soon. And oh I am the type of person where when I work with something, I'm usually done with that mm. brand. I don't typically repeat. Depends. Things. It depends. Yeah. But I've worked with a lot of this base, the Yarnadelic, mm -hmm. which is 100% Coriadale, and I'm kind of just done with it. I get There's it. nothing wrong with it. You I've do, just experienced yeah. a lot of it. Like, you do the whole sweater spin out yes, of it. I spun probably close to a thousand grams of this particular roving. Well, and that's where, like, on my Jupiter, I'm doing a lot of just plain merino right now, and I'm kind of itching to do something, something different. different. Um, I thought about doing kind of a little palette cleanse spin in between you colors. So we'll see. So anyways, I have, this is leftover from my Jupiter crop spin. It's like 20 grams. Yeah. <laughs> but I had already gifted Zoe some of this color when mm -hmm. she's already spun and is in her Jupiter crop. Yes. Um, Which will be good if you I run out of that colorway. You have that. Oh, I won't run out. It's like the one I need the least of. But <laughs> no, I was thinking I can like save this. I have a bunch of little like samples and odds and ends and I'm gonna make kind of a Franken scheme at mm, some point. That'll be pretty. Um, 
So keep that. Or if I ever invest in some kind of blending tool, like a blending board or hand carters, I can always play with that. And then the last is 100 grams of this colorway. It's called the Woman in Blue. Oh, that's really pretty. It's this really pretty ice blue with gray and black blended throughout. Mm -hmm. It spins up really they pretty. They complement each yeah. other nicely. So I think... That's it that for is everything. everything for me that I have acquired in the last like two weeks. Other than one skein of Lobby and May that's in my bin mm. right now. I think that does it for no. no. I was gonna say no. You got more, don't you? Oh, yes, <laughs> I do. But oh, wait, God. there's more. <laughs> So I already showed off the three skeins that we went and got, and mm -hmm. then I think you've been debating de-stashing this yes. for a while. I bought that for a swap partner, but I changed my mind about it last year. Yeah. Um, and I bought that from a local yarn shop in Franklin, North Carolina. So it's this really pretty, like, purple that borders, like, a dark brown To me, that's plum. eggplant. That's not plum, that's eggplant. It's in the plum range to me. There are multiple shades of plum. We disagree on color names a All lot. The time. <laughs> and yes, this color is Gypsy Rose. It's really pretty. It's gorgeous. It's another, it's like the indigo dust. There's a lot of like depth of yeah. color when you're looking at it in I person. I had thought about just keeping it and making socks out of it, but it's definitely more your color palette. It's in my wheelhouse. Yeah. And so this is coming home with me. And then last night when I was shopping, in-person shopping Felicity Yarn Studio, yes. I snagged one skein of her basic witch sock set. Yes. That's and kind of a one of a kind thing. I don't know if you just said one of a kind or not. I didn't, but, but, but yeah, it's, it's another a a plum, yeah. shocker plum. And yes. it has a really pretty coordinating mini with Some golds and that same plum color it's very and black. similar to the minis on the Plumpkin Spice, but not yes. quite the same. Yeah. So this is coming home with me. I might make socks, but... You also have that skein of self-striping. You keep talking about making socks out of. <laughs> I know. I actually but... almost brought that up as my trip name. Oh, yeah. Well, and the fact that you got two at a time practice on the sleeves, I think you would yeah, find it more I enjoyable do with it. sock knitting. I think my problem with socks is twofold. One is I never knit the second sock. Two at a time. I know. Saw that. And two, I usually slow down around the time of the heel. Whenever I turn the heel, no matter if it's bottom up or toe down, Mm. that's usually where I'm like, and I'm over this. Well, if you do the self-striping after the hot heels look the best with self-striping mm. and then you don't have to worry about a heel till you're all the way done. <laughs> but will I put in the heel is you the question. Will. Eventually. I'll put, if you knit the whole socks, I'll put the heel in for you. You heard it here, folks. You gotta mail them <laughs> to me. But anyways, yes, I think that's the end. Oh, wait. Is that everything? Oh yeah, you're going to show off your... I've got those two. So I have a book bag that has all my pins on it. So Zoe got me two new pins to throw on Yeah, book I got bag. myself the same ones. I've already put the Moonstone one somewhere. Yeah, I need to put them on my bag. And then Pink so Sky Gazer. This is not really yarn related, but if you guys want a good kind of boutique online shop, check out Moonwater Co. Mm -hmm. They, they do sent hand me bags. a freebie pin too. Yeah, bags. They've got t-shirts and mm. um, other kind of like household type things. But they have really good pins That's if you're into enamel pins. Yeah. Sand dollar. Yeah. And they always send little freebies with their packages, which is nice. Nice and always entices me to come back for more. So anyway, is that everything? I think that's everything. Y'all cool. should see the hot oh. mess oh. before us. We should pile everything on the bed when we're done. I don't know how you're going to fit this all in your bag. I'll fit it. We might be going out for some vacuum seal bags tonight. I'll fit it. <laughs> I am Plus a... an advent calendar. I'll fit it. <laughs> I'm a packing queen. 
True. I can shove a lot of stuff in a very small bag. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's that. Let's stop there. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, yes. you guys. If you want to get us to a 500 subscriber giveaway, maybe a 400 on Zoe's Possibly. channel. I might could be talked into something like um, that. Yeah, if you like today's episode, give it a thumbs up. Give it a subscribe. If you haven't watched our show and tell episode, pop on over to Zoe's channel and check it out over there yep. where you will see more antics. Yes. And, <laughs> more nonsense. And yes, until next time, we will talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Eat for a year. <laughs> okay. You can show up your whiskey. Yes. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> Yeah, the problem with this dress is when I sit down, yeah. it pulls it down. Part two. Hey, curators. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> that was a little crusty. <laughs> yeah, this is turning into a hot, hot mess. <laughs>